What if we told you that your next luxury pearl necklace could be made from human teeth? In the coastal city of Nha Trang, Vietnam, one pearl farm and its daring owner is pushing the boundaries of nature and fashionable memorabilia. By grafting human teeth into oysters, it's hoped that one day they'd yield a pearl that not only looks beautiful, but also carries memories within. But how exactly? Today, our crew follows Mr. Tuan to see the whole process for ourselves. For the tourists in the back who are new to pearl farming, here's a brief overview. For centuries, pearls have been a luxury good due to its incredible rarity. In nature, pearl formation happens entirely by chance when a foreign substance enters the oyster's shell, like a sand particle, a small parasite like a drill worm, or even a piece of its own shell that broke off and it accidentally sucked in. When the foreign particle enters the shell, it would irritate the oyster living inside. To protect itself, the oyster would secrete a calcium-rich, iridescent substance called nacre, or mother of pearl. The oyster would coat the invader in layer upon layer of nacre, depending on how irritated it is, forming a pearl sac. Naturally formed pearls tend to be very small. They'd also have very strange shape, completely different from the beads most people are familiar with. That is, until Kokichi Mikimoto, a Japanese scientist considered as the father of pearl farming, discovered artificial pearl cultivation in 1893. By implanting into the oyster's tissue a nucleus, a piece of material that's safe for the oyster to ingest, Mikimoto could force the oyster to release nacre around the nucleus. In time, we'd have a shiny pearl. It starts in this highly controlled laboratory, where lab technicians must create the perfect condition for oyster larvae to turn into healthy pearl-producing adults. The larvae are kept in temperature-controlled tanks and kept them fed by pumping plankton, the choice food of oysters, from these yellow-colored five-liter water bottles. The baby oysters are monitored round the clock for 45 days. That's usually how long it takes for them to grow to two millimeters in size. At this stage, they can be transferred into special enclosures out in the ocean. The process has been patented by Huangjia Pearl Farm, owned by Mr. Tuan. The farm has been known in the industry for some time as the producer of high-quality conventional pearls. Mr. Tuan pulls the oysters from the water, offering us a look into their different life stages beneath the sea. Từ cái kích thước cỡ hai ly là chúng ta có thể thả được xuống biển bằng cái lồng nó nó nhặt như thế này. Thì sau một tháng thì con đây là những con trai con nó bám trên cái miếng lưới này các bạn. Đó, nó một về như thế này nè. Nhiều lắm các bạn. Cái, cái, cái số lượng nó lên tới vài trăm nghìn tới vài triệu con lận. Once sufficiently grown, the oysters are taken to larger enclosures where they can continue to grow and develop into adults. Periodically, the oysters are fished out of the water and onto boats, where technicians inspect each mollusk for signs of disease and parasite. They're also carefully washed to keep them healthy. Trung bình nó chết khoảng từng trên dưới 5% do con ốc lông là chính. Thường con ốc lông nó lọt vô trong cái cái lồng này đó, và nó tiết ra một cái nhớt. Thì cái con trai mình là nó sống nhờ lọc nước mà, nó lọc nó hút vô cái nhớt đó, cái nhớt đó có chất độc làm cho trai nó nó chết. Thì sau khi trai nó hả miệng ra, thịt nó nó bị rã ra đó, thì ốc lông nó vô nó mới ăn. Thì đây là cái cách mà địch hại nó săn mồi với nhau. When the oysters are about 11 month old, those that have the right size and good health are selected to undergo nucleus implantation. They're taken ashore, where trained technicians carefully insert a nucleus and other materials into the oyster. The technician is demonstrating where the nucleus is implanted. She tears the oyster's gonads and injects the nucleus in the middle. She then adds pieces of mantle tissues from mollusks under the nucleus. These tissues are essential to the pearl quality, and without it, the oyster won't produce any pearl at all. This procedure has always been challenging, but replacing a standard bead with a human tooth makes it even more complex. If the plantation is deemed a success, the oysters are released back into their enclosures. Beneath the sea, the secret of the pearl is guarded by the oysters. Unlike other gemstones, pearls are formed by living creatures. No matter how well humans prepare, creating the ideal conditions or hoping for success, the outcome still ultimately rests with the oyster. In the case of the tooth-implanted oyster, Mr. Tuan faces two significant challenges. 
First, a human tooth is significantly larger than a typical pearl nucleus. As such, the oyster may be unable to cover it in nacre, resulting in uneven-looking pearls. Secondly, while human teeth are indeed made from calcium carbonate, it's not the only thing they're made from. They're also composed of hydroxyapatite crystals, which is something pearl shell doesn't have. Therefore, they run huge risks of getting rejected by the oyster. Where did the fascination of making pearls from human teeth came from? According to Mr. Tuan, it's a deeply personal story. In 2008, khi mà đất nước cả thế giới và đất nước Việt Nam chúng ta rơi vào cuộc khủng hoảng kinh tế thế giới rất là nặng nề đó thì à, cuối cùng thì dự án cũng phải dừng lại và họ cũng rút về thì đến 2009 là mình mới buồn bã quá nghề thì học rồi mà làm một thời gian rồi có đủ tích lũy kinh nghiệm rồi mình mới quay lại đi tìm một số anh em có nghề ngư dân để mà tập hợp để dạy họ làm và gây dựng cái cơ ngơi cái trang trại ngọc trai hoàng gia cho tới ngày hôm nay thì lúc đó mình dẫn cậu con trai đi theo trong một cái dịp đó thì lại ngay cái 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 lúc là cậu đi nhổ răng sữa là lúc cậu còn nhỏ mà mới có sáu bảy tuổi thôi xong rồi cái bác sĩ mới cho cái cây răng đó gối lại mang về thì vô tình mình mang ra đảo luôn các bạn khi mình nhìn cái cây răng đó mình nghĩ là tại sao mình không biến cái cây răng này thành cái viên ngọc trai mà hình cây răng các bạn thì kết quả rất là bất ngờ khi một thời gian đủ thì cái xà cừ của ngọc trai lại bao cái cây răng đó thành cái cái viên ngọc trai hình cái răng các bạn. The touching story was on the crew's mind for the entire trip to the harvesting site. We could hardly wait to see Mr. Tuan's son's milk tooth having turned into a pearl. All right, well, well. All right, well. As each oyster is pried open by tools and then by hands, our hope for a toothed pearl was dashed. At some point during the six long years that it took to get to this point, the pearl holding Mr. Tuan's son's tooth was lost. After years of hard work and anticipation, he was able to harvest a bucket full of gleaming gems, but none of them was the one Mr. Tuan truly wanted to see. Nevertheless, he wasn't cowed. Before parting, he told us that he wished to continue with his ambitious experiment, hoping to realize it one day. As we left the sunny beaches and gleaming blue water of Nha Trang behind, we couldn't help but be touched by the passion that Mr. Tuan put into his project and the main drive behind his courage. Family.